last week we talked about Diddy um, facing a hundred, actually not facing, <laughs> not facing. It was already ruled that he owed this man that was in prison a hundred million dollars. Now he's going to be next to the guy that he's with in prison because uh, <laughs> I mean, it's happening, guys. It is happening. Diddy faces a stunning federal indictment that has everyone talking. The charges racketeering, money laundering, and get this sex trafficking by force, fraud, or coercion. And the details are wild. Prosecutors are alleging that Diddy led an entire criminal enterprise that had been operating in the shadows for years. And it involves everything from lavish parties to some truly bizarre evidence, including, get this, 1,000 bottles of baby oil. <laughs> Let's break it down. So here's the deal. The indictment isn't just about financial crimes. It paints a picture of an entire underground operation. Prosecutors are charging Diddy with a run with running a criminal enterprise that involves everything from drug trafficking to sex trafficking. According to U.S. Attorney Damian Williams, the investigation revealed a pattern of abuse and exploitation of women and others over the years. And they just didn't find financial records. They seized three defaced AR-15 rifles, I guess, that had the serial numbers removed. And 1,000, oh, sorry, over 1,000 bottles of baby oil and personal lubricant. Interested in what that was. Used for what? Stuff expires, so I've heard. Ah, I saw you very allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> and personal lubricant used for what's being described as freak offs <laughs> from his home in Miami and Los Angeles earlier this year. They seized those items. And this just isn't about money. The feds are pulling back the curtain on a lifestyle that's darker than anyone could have ever imagined when it comes to P. Diddy. As part of this investigation, in March of this year, special agents from HSI executed search warrants at Combs' residences in Miami and Los Angeles. They also executed a warrant for Combs' electronic devices. During those searches, agents seized evidence of the crimes charged in this indictment. They seized firearms and ammunition, including three defaced AR-15s and a large capacity drum magazine. They also seized evidence of the freak-offs, electronic devices that contain images and videos of the freak-offs with multiple victims. And they seized cases and cases of the kinds of personal lubricant and baby oil that Combs' staff allegedly used to stock hotel rooms for the freak-offs, more than 1,000 bottles altogether. A year ago, Sean Combs stood in Times Square and was handed a key to New York City. Today, he's been indicted and will face justice in the Southern District of New York. Second, we are not done. This investigation is ongoing, and I encourage anyone with information about this case to come forward and to do it quickly. And Charlemagne um, said on the Breakfast Club this morning that if you have ever been naked around Diddy, <laughs> you should anticipate going to jail. <laughs> 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 That's how dire the situation um, has gotten for people around Diddy. Now, let's talk about the infamous freak offs. Private over the top parties where prosecutors say drugs, money, and illicit activities were all in play. And these weren't just wild celebrity gatherings. The indictment alleges that they were cover-ups for criminal activities where deals were being made and intimidation was the name of the game. Authority sees extensive evidence of these parties, including video evidence and the infamous baby oil. It's hard to tell exactly what role the baby oil played. Um, oh, I, was not, <laughs> I mean, maybe for just lubricant purposes. No, you don't use no baby oil for lubricant. Infection? No, the, yeah. I'll tell it's, you after the show, since okay. you two kids are clearly a virgin out here. Clearly, I mean, okay. Clearly, <laughs> so we any of the parties, Dex, we're sorry. We were. We were well, y'all don't know what, what, what baby oil is used for in the bedroom? You tell us. Nope. No, you mean no. <laughs> if you, if you, we got this far without it, I think we'll be okay. No, well, you missing out. I, people I ain't order a thousand. People are not ordering a thousand bottles of baby oil for something that's not fun. You better believe it. You better get with it. The um, general massage. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Thanks, Kanisha. 
Um, he has pled not guilty um, as of today to these charges. The courtroom sketch of Diddy in in the in the courthouse with a black tunic um, as his personal fashion line. If found guilty, Diddy Diddy could be facing up to life in prison. But his legal team is pushing back hard. Of course, with this type of evidence, the feds are showing this battle is just the beginning. He was also um, denied bail. He put up a recommendation. His team put up a recommendation of $50 million to be paid in bail for order for him to be out of jail. Um, but the judge denied it, citing the seriousness of the charges and the risk of continued criminal behavior. Dex, what is your takeaway from uh, this criminal indictment? Oh, the big big dog is going to jail for a very long time. He <laughs> will not see outside like this right here. When they took him in, they said, "You better sniff this air and you better sniff it good." Because you'll he never was outside yesterday air. for all day. All yeah. he was sitting in, yeah. he was literally sitting in Central Park yeah. yesterday, thirty minutes before they arrested him. You got to do. I don't know why <laughs> you're never gonna do it again. Like you're going to. <laughs> Be unalived in that jail cell like this. You're gonna be. You're going to be in that jail cell for as long as you live. You're going to meet your grandchildren behind bars. Ah, oh, it's terrible. You better believe that. And when I was reading that thing, it was it's a 14 page document. I had to put my out of office at work at work today and just like sit there and just read it. Like I like it was like a freaking novel. Or Did you see like them that. tell Megan kind of to um, charge her Bob? Plus, <laughs> yes, but I feel like I was heard today when I as I was reading this stuff. I'm just going through it or whatever. And the part that like really tripped me out was like this stuff when they talk about the the, the freak offs and how they were all set up and it was like male prostitutes and it was like this person would call and and set up male prostitutes to come to a hotel and then they would stock it with the lube and the baby oil and drugs and alcohol and they would bring extra linens and then they mm -hmm. After everything, oh, and lighting too. They would set it up like they were about to film an episode of Bro Talk. They would put like lighting and whatnot around the room so that he could come in there and do what he does. And then the day after, they would come and clean the room up. That right there, I would be yes. suing you if I had to clean yes. staging and breakdown is crazy. That was insane to me reading over that. And then they talked a lot about other people being involved in it, not their names, but his team being involved in it. So y'all going to jail too. Could you imagine being the person who was walking behind Diddy, cleaning up used condoms and, and lubricant and whatnot for 10 years of your life, and then now you're going to jail behind that? Mm -hmm. And they said that this stuff had been going on. They have evidence that goes back to 2008. Mm -hmm. You're never getting out of jail. And they're being kind because some people are saying that it was happening in the 90s. Like So they're being very kind with the 2008 date. Ty, how do you feel about Diddy's accusations? Will you be playing any bad boy music or is this going to stop you from um, reminiscing with such uh, tunes? I don't know. I, 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 honestly, when I look at this stuff, the last thing I think about is Diddy's music. Like, I don't. I mean, because that's what we know him for, though. Like, otherwise, what, 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 what relevance does he have in our lives? Um, I, I like Victoria's B.I.G.'s music. So I'm going to continue to listen to that. Where, Diddy was involved. Or not. That's just not a factor for me. Uh, maybe I won't listen to that little "Missing You" song or whatever other stuff he did. Diddy You're not did gonna a, listen to the "No Way Out" album. Anymore? Maybe I'll leave. Uh, maybe I'll skip. I need a girl. Like I, stuff no one's really listening to these days anyway. So part two, even with Loon, it's crazy. Loon is not even listening to "I Need a Girl" part two. Where is he? He's <laughs> where? Loon, Loon is somewhere hoping that he's not on those lists. That's what the that's where he's on the list. Loon, no, is, Loon was gone before two thousand eight. Gone. Is, is okay. Loon's fine. Like, yeah, Loon is, fine. Uh, is somewhere. Loon was two thousand and four. Okay. Yeah, we're done with that. He's done. With, like, listen, you know it's weird to me. It, like, what is all this for? Like, Diddy, if you wanted a couple of the boys around. To do their thing, like you couldn't just do this to normal. Like, what is all this? Like a, it's like a power thing, and they talked about that. You have so much money from music and deals and clothes. Like you're running an illegal drug and sex trafficking ring for what? For what? For what? I think it's just power because it's it, so it, 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 weird. It talked about how like he would use this as like leverage for the girls, like careers and stuff. So he would say like, and he would take away money from them and whatnot, and like he would make their livelihood attached to him. So like he would do this as like a power thing, just to kind of like show like I'm the king of the world over here. But I do agree with you. Like people would be doing this stuff willingly for you if you wanted them to. Kanisha thought Loon had died. Um, no, Loon um, <laughs> turned his life over to religion. 
and is now on the religious scene. Um, that's what Luna's doing. He's not dead. We do wish him the absolute best, though. Hope that he's not brought up in any. Oh, oh I know, he... I know he's grinning from ear to ear. He can't wait for Dizzy to get locked up. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's another thing that sticks out to me. Too. Hold up. Another thing. That's a good point. Um, sorry, Dex, to interrupt you. But that's a good point, Ty, about people around Diddy who have turned to religion. I'm not saying religion's a bad thing or anything like that. Like, I'm a Christian. But people who have, like, explicitly, like, after leaving Diddy, gone to seek God in, in whatever form or fashion that represents, they realize after they've left Diddy, they need God. I don't know if that's a good example, though, because Mace did it, came back, went back, and then came back again. So I don't know if that's... Yeah, but he wasn't with Diddy when he came back. He did He did come back with Diddy. I mean, he... Okay. He did... Twice, actually. He was on label. But then he yeah, switched and to and murder. And he, he, he switched to 50 well. Cent, and then he became Murder Mace, and then he switched to Cameron, and now he's doing a Cameron thing. But, but before the poor Cameron, he went back to Diddy, did a tour. No, you're right. Yeah, the welcome back. To Cameron. Yeah, I think oh. he needed a way back in. Like, you know. You know. Those parties like, are probably. I'm not saying the parties are entertaining. It's like when you probably, go back to your old job. You're like, y'all still got openings. <laughs> I don't think the parties are entertaining. To be honest with you, because if you went and set up like lighting and lube, I can't imagine being entertained at that. Like what? No, that's not entertaining at all. That's well, those scary. people were working. Like that's a job for y'all. It's entertaining for Diddy. Like he's watching it like a person. Yeah, but like, does that is that is the party downstairs? And then now you think you're getting VIP. No, 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 no. It's different. But see, that's <laughs> the thing, though. When people talk about celebrities being on these tapes and stuff, from what I read, these freak off parties were in hotels, like totally separate. Like you're not going to catch any celebrities Correct. on these. Yeah. But then they say he always has parties at his homes. And that is the stuff that I think celebrities could be implicated in. I think a lot of them are in those. Well, you situations. remember even a year ago. And I thought, honestly, I thought a year ago when this picture posted, I think the Shade Room posted it, but there was a picture of Diddy and this super large bed. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. And I immediately and thought. so many celebrities on that too. Like Chris, exactly. I, Chris I immediately Netflix thought on. he's having orgies. Like what yeah. in the world is going on? Like, For me, I'm, I'm with Todd though. If I walk into a party, I walk to somebody's backyard and I see an extra large bed. A huge bed. bed. Like the I'm largest walking, bed you've ever seen in your life. I, I'm out of here. Because I don't know what y'all got going on, but I don't want to be a part of it. Kanisha, we do take scoops. So um, we have, like, our largest story ever came from a um, James Dolan scoop with the New York Knicks that someone scooped for us um, when they were backstage um, showing uh, uh, Spike Lee not getting involved or not getting, uh, sorry, invited into uh, the backstage area of the Knicks and, and made it on to first take. So if you have a scoop, feel free to send it to us. We go viral when it happens. We take scoops, okay? Um, now we've outed you. You know, people know where the scoop came from. But, you know. but just, just real quick, the one thing I was going to say is that for Diddy to have all these enemies that he's created over the years within the industry, for none of this stuff to ever come out before, despite like you guys have to know something. Despite none of like none of this stuff ever coming out, for Cassie to be a woman and like minimal success in the industry in my opinion for her to like be the very one, limited because of diddy yeah, yes but for her to be the one that like topples this whole thing it just really makes me look at a lot of people sideways like and i didn't even doing? bring up don Rashard, who um um you know said this week that before all of the indictments happened um she came out with her own story about witnessing a lot Ooh, of this stuff that sucks though could you imagine waiting all that time like she did putting your story out and then the very next week the yeah. feds get them like you ain't gonna get up time like they're not even yeah, she didn't, she didn't get any, i mean honestly it probably wasn't for her so i don't i don't think it matters that much but yeah she didn't get any any quote unquote blow as far as that goes um yeah because like look, we got some we got bigger fish to fry now so like sorry don she also had her um label mate Kalina Harper, who was part, who was the other half of Diddy Dirty Money when they made that whole Last Train of Paris album. Um, Kalena came out and said that she didn't witness any of that. So she doesn't know what Don's talking about. And now she looks kind of crazy, right? Well, yes, because something came out today that said that Diddy in one day called her like 52 times back to back in one day. Kalena? Yes, he called her like 52 Maybe. times, and they were saying like he was the reason one of the reasons they won't let him out is because they said he's been contacting people like, that um, oh probably trying to put the word out to say hey I'm not a bad person so that's why Kalina did it is that what you're saying uh, I'm not saying I'm not a bad person but shut the hell up don't open your okay. mouth when I talk to you and they said that he wanted him they wanted them to cooperate stories with him 
And like, if you're calling somebody 54, 54 times, you ain't calling them to say hello, happy birthday. <laughs> like, yeah, you're what, are we doing? what are we doing here? Yeah. All right. Um, so like that's what we have on Diddy. <laughs> um, sorry that it took so long to explain, but it's a heavy story. So I figured that we cover it in depth. Okay.